Um, Kyle, can you raise your hand up? Yeah, there you go. And then we've got Jeremy Green. These two guys are the social ninjas. They have a, a podcast called The Social Ninjas, which I love. By the way, I love that name. I'm a martial artist, so that's just the cool <laughs> coolest name for your podcast. Um, both of these guys have broken free of severe social anxiety and now spend their lives helping others do the same. And I've had a chance to talk to them both um, off air, and they're, they're really cool guys. So I'm going to read really quick. I'm going to read a bio, and then we'll get started, okay? So Kyle is a mental health speaker, podcaster, advocate, and social media influencer. He's passionate about solving the problem of poor mental health in the world and the impact that mental health has on people, especially the youth. Couldn't fit in better with our mission. Has a business degree on focusing on marketing and management. Soon after graduating, he realized that his purpose in life is to help people understand what mental health is, why it's important, and why we all can do what we all can do to improve our own mental health and the help and help others improve theirs. He's a member of NAMI, National Alliance of Mental Illnesses, certified in ending the silence, speaker for NAMI, where he goes to schools and spreads his message about mental health and resides in Indiana, loves to run Spartan races, travel, read, and spend time with his beautiful wife, Paulina, and their three kids. That's awesome. And Jeremy is a social coach, podcaster, and influencer, struggled with severe social anxiety while growing up, and I believe you said you were bullied, correct? The, the, I thought I heard that. Struggled with severe social anxiety while growing up, completed a degree in communications and psychology, and numerous other trainings, including a 10-day silent meditation and the Mankind Project. In the middle of his transformation, he was offered a gig interviewing celebrities on the red carpet, but he was terrified. He set out to practice by recording interviews with the general public, and this turned into Jeremy Talks to Strangers, which I think is so cool. I think we lost Jeremy. We're going to get Jeremy back. Jeremy did not like what I was saying about him. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm out of here. It cut off. It's so funny. I think it's so perfect, like, getting cut off. I think the old me would have been freaking out. Just, right? <laughs> now you just roll with it, right? And I'm like, eh. Yeah. But what Next. I love is these guys made this their mission in life. They took something... And on our podcast, The Brain Warrior's Way, we talk about constantly, notice we both have these martial arts sayings, right? You guys have the ninjas and we have The Brain Warrior's Way. Um, and so um, these guys talk about pain to purpose just like we do. And so I love this. And I, when I heard that, I'm like, I need to have these guys on my show. So thank you for being here. And let's get started. I want to know, um, I'm going to probably have to direct these questions so you guys are not trying to you know, struggle over <laughs> who's going to answer. Um, but let's say, um, Kyle, tell us, you know, tell us your number one goal for, for doing this. Why did you do this? What's your mission? Um, why are you wanting to help people with social anxiety? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I have a heavy heart for people with social anxiety, but I think it's even further than that. And it's, you know, ex expanded to like mental health in general. You know, while I don't struggle with social anxiety like I used to, I still have to put in a daily practice to improve upon my mental health. So my kind of mission is to build a community of people that one know what mental health is because I didn't know what that is, what that was growing up, and to give them the tools to be able to take action with their own mental health, improve their own lives, and you know feel good about themselves and their mental health. No, I love that. Maybe we should take a second. Jeremy, maybe you can answer this one. Tell tell our people listening, um, not everybody's super familiar with the term social anxiety. So what do you guys mean by social anxiety? What made you pick this? What do you mean by social anxiety? Why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because connection is, or should I say lack thereof connection, research shows is one of the biggest causes of depression and anxiety in the world, just and, and, and like dissatisfaction in life in general. And mm -hmm. so social anxiety, to get back to your, your question, is if you have severe anxiety that prevents you from being um, social in social situations. So social anxiety for me is, as I said earlier in the pre uh, live is I just, I couldn't go up to anybody. I couldn't. And I like to say as long, like one of my favorite quotes, as long as you're being authentic, you're never failing. Mm -hmm. And my social anxiety prevented me from being authentic. And that drove right. me crazy. I like, I went through, you know, parts of depression. I went through a lot of mm -hmm. really challenging times. Well, it's interesting because we're going through COVID right now and depression has doubled in the UK. 
uh, when, when quarantine first started, calls to the suicide hotline were up a thousand percent. We have mental health clinics. And so obviously our lines have been slammed. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing for society. Um, I'm glad that there are people like us helping. I'm glad that you guys are helping. You've got a podcast, but it's a hard time for people with social anxiety. They already are anxious. So now we're disconnected and that's not an easy thing. Um, do you think that, do you think that social anxiety is a big reason that you see or you hear about the youth like teenagers drinking and doing drugs? Does it like, do they think they're going to find a solution to social anxiety with substances? Is this, uh, uh, of course, uh, me or Kyle? Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> um, you know, well, you froze, so I'm going to aim this one to Kyle. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say it's like the only reason, obviously, for, you know, doing drugs and, and alcohol and stuff. Uh, I don't even know if it's the main reason, but I, I would say that, you know, myself included, what I've heard from a lot of other people is, you know, by, you know, doing drugs and drinking alcohol, it can make you feel like, oh, that social anxiety is gone. Like I have no fear, you know, what they call the, the liquid courage. So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I can, you know, drink a few beers and then I'm, you know, I'm not socially anxious to go talk to girls and that type of thing. So, yeah, I, I can understand that a little bit. Yeah, I think um, where I got that, where I, the reason I asked that question was Bradley Cooper did an interview and he, um, he actually, you know, the star is born. Um, that movie was just amazing, but he, actually had gone through a rehab program, even though everyone in his life said he wasn't an alcoholic. And he said the reason he did it was because he realized his social anxiety was so bad that he had to drink in order to feel comfortable in a crowd of people talking to people, like at a party. And when he realized that, he realized that was a really bad sign. And so he didn't want to have that crutch. And so he wanted to learn how to get by without it. And that made me think, oh, I bet that's why a lot of kids are doing it. Um, so my husband actually would say that, yes, a lot of kids with social anxiety do turn to substances. And I was just wondering if you guys had actually experienced that firsthand. Um, I'm just curious because I've got teenagers in my house. <laughs> and so I've got three teenagers. I'm just curious. You guys are really young. You're out there talking to people. And I'm just curious what you guys have seen with that. Have you seen anything like that, Jeremy? Yeah, I wanted to kind of uh, uh, piggyback on what Kyle said, and I think that uh, drugs and alcohol and substance abuse is a form of uh, distracting yourself mm -hmm. from actually dealing with those emotions and uh, things you're insecure about and actually processing old trauma or even new, as you said, a crutch. And what I learned, which was really hard for me, is that you know, being vulnerable, asking, seeking help is a, a superpower. And I never forget yep. the, the first time I actually, I actually processed all the anger that I had for my main bully in middle school and how freeing slash scary, but freeing it was. I felt so much more confident and all like my old stories that were preventing me from showing up confidently and showing up as a leader in, and showing up in it, how I want to show up, and that's to be a powerhouse of self-love and authentic human connection. I love that. Um, no, that's really good. Um, and did you freeze again? No, he's good. Okay, we're good. We had to freeze for a second, but you're good. Your voice was still on, even though you froze. We're good. Um, so what are some tips? I want to ask each of you. So Kyle, you go first. Um, what is a tip that someone could do today that will help them, someone who's struggling with social anxiety? Yeah, so I'd say my first tip would be start small. I know you, a lot of people, like we talked a little bit about exposure therapy and, you know, do something that scares you to kind of, you know, expose that anxiety in yourself. And But if a big problem that I see is a lot of people try to go way too big and it actually bring, you know, like brings you down and you're actually worse than where you started. So I think that's like my number one thing. That's what I try to tell, especially when I'm speaking in schools and stuff, like start small, don't go try to, you know, do a public speaking gig for a gig for hundred people. If like you're completely terrified, like start small just by, you know, just talking to one person. Or I know uh, Jeremy does a little thing before he does his uh, uh, free hugs that he just goes and waves to 10 random people. Sorry, I didn't want to steal that from you, but I think that's a really good example of uh, starting small. So yeah, that would be my tip. Excellent. And how about you, Jeremy? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, piggyback off what 
Kyle said, start small, 1% better every day. You hear me? <laughs> okay, I'm sure. Yeah. And, uh, you put your face in the and you. Okay, cool. <laughs> And then at the same time, be very compassionate towards yourself along the way is really important. Mm. And to forgive mm. yourself as quickly as possible. And also a really big one is my thoughts do not define me. And that's, yes. that's helped me so much. So if I have the thought that, you know, I'm not good enough, no one likes me, which I had a lot of, I would, I would fuse it together with who I am and I would think that. So for me, it's separating those negative thoughts, just noticing them as an observer. So instead of I'm not good enough is I have the thought that I'm not good enough separation. And then the next one would be, I notice that I have the thought that I'm not good enough. And that separates that. it even more. I love that. Um, so we, um, so again, I'm a martial artist. I love this ninja concept. Um, and so we have an expression there is no failing as long as you get up. So you can fall a thousand times. And as long as you get up, all you did was learn a different way not to do it. Right. So as long as you continue to get up, so never look at it like failure. If you walk into a social situation and you, um, you know, something didn't go the way you wanted to, you were embarrassed, you, you know, it didn't, it just, you feel awkward and you leave. Okay. Just make sure you go back. That's the falling. Don't let it turn into a failure. The only way it's a failure is if you just stay down. Mm -hmm. um, and I love what you said about your thoughts because we actually have an expression killing the ants, automatic negative thoughts. Um, so we kill the ants. They're automatic negative thoughts that come into your life. They ruin your day because here's the truth. Your thoughts, you just said your thoughts don't define you. We actually agree, but we actually would say your, your thoughts lie to you. They lie a lot. A lot, yeah. Just because mm -hmm. you have the thought, you know, people don't like me doesn't make it real. So we have a friend, Byron Katie, and um, she okay. has, do you know who she is? Yes. Okay. I did her nine day workshop. Talk about mind bending. That workshop is, will turn you inside out. Did you do it? Did you? Oh wait, Jeremy. Froh, I have done, I've, I've tried. I've, no, I've done a lot of the, her stuff though. Oh, I highly recommend it, but you will not leave the same person. So um, yeah, you like I used to, my, my thing was I was just so hung up on like thinking people cared like, just being so afraid to like this perfection, you know, like people had these expectations. No, they didn't. They're not even thinking about me, but I didn't, you know, I didn't see that. It's because so many women when they're young have this perfectionism um, thing that's just paralyzing. And so um, your thoughts lie, they lie a lot. And her questions will literally transform your life. Is it true? No, it's like, is it true? Can you know that it's true? No, I can't absolutely know that it's true that people don't like me, right? How do you feel when you have the thought? Frozen, anxious, like all these things. Um, not free. Um, who would you be without the thought? Free, right? And then turn the thought around. Is it, people don't like me. You have to make it its opposite. People do like me. Well, that doesn't maybe doesn't feel right at first. But give me three small examples of when people have liked you. If you can come up with three tiny examples, you crack the thought. Or then what's another one? I don't like other people. Maybe that's more it. Maybe you've been afraid of other people. But you just start cracking the thought and it's just like fun to play with it. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, whoa, okay, I just can't anymore. <laughs> like, I can't think this thought anymore. It's too much work. <laughs> yeah, so. definitely. I wanted to piggyback off what you said as far as my brain doesn't want any change. And that includes positive change. Yeah. And for me, that's that's why those like my thoughts lie to me because it doesn't want me to grow in a positive way because yeah. then I'm, I'm taking a risk. And our and our brains are have have not evolved since caveman cave woman days in the sense of like if I exit a cave and there's a, a saber tooth tiger to my right and sunshine rainbows all my dreams coming true all sorts of confidence to my right if I pay attention to all of that amazingness that saber tooth tiger is going to get to me Perfect. so we're con on this consistent uh, fight or flight loop so it's it's that's so it takes work to be happy it takes work to process the stuff. Could not agree with what you said more. Um, human beings will choose what they know over the positive change almost every time. It takes a lot of work to make that decision not to do that because it's they're more afraid of change than they are of, um, yeah, they're way more afraid to change than they are of staying. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was shamed by my main bully a lot. Like he, him and I got in an argument 
And uh, instead of you know, hashing it out with me, he decided to displace his own displeasures on, of his life and his identity issues he was having. Yeah. And he took it out of me. He spread rumors about me, spread rumors about my family. Um, whenever like people would like grab me by the neck and throw me to the floor and pour, throw a half empty bottle of Powerade at my head and just make my life a very challenging time. And that really it, took a to, it took a toll on me. And I had an oldest brother who was living with autism and he would, would beat me up because he was having a hard time. So there's all this displacement going on that I was taking on that, that story that was very that unhealthy. Shut you down. Yeah, if, you, if you're not, if you're, if you don't have the tools to manage that, that'll shut you down. And I so, took it, per, I took it personally. Like I didn't know that they were having a challenge and nothing to do with me. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? Do you remember when it started for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can say looking back now, pretty much struggle with it. My, I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I, I didn't really have to like fully face it until I, uh, transferred high schools. So I went to a completely new high school my sophomore year where I knew absolutely no one. So I didn't have a kind of a crutch or someone to kind of lean on. I was there all by myself, you know, having to figure it out. That, that's uh, really when it hit me hard was sophomore year of high school for sure. Yeah. Someone's asking an interesting question. Um, so less about social anxiety, but I just want to answer it really quickly. Does brain damage happen in schizophrenia? Um, actually, interestingly, schizophrenia can be can look different in, on scans um, from different things. Lyme disease looks like schizophrenia. So things like infections can actually show up as schizophrenia. So I just wanted to answer that person really quickly. Um, so if you have an infection, it can look like Lyme disease. I mean, if you have an infection, it can look like schizophrenia. Um, there are you know substances that can you know possibly trigger those reactions. So I would say definitely talk to a professional. Um, it's just really, really interesting. Um, so don't suffer in silence is what I would say. And here's one that says, um, I actually can't hold on. That's from a other language. I wanted to read some of the questions. Um, the pandemic has been a blessing to work through my shadow material. Let's see. The blessing has been a, a pandemic to work through my shadow material authentically in a safe intensifying environment. The pandemic's actually, have you guys noticed this on your podcast talking to people? The pandemic for some people has been a blessing as this person states. And for other people, it has been a nightmare, right? So I like being home. I don't really want to go out and like deal with people. So I like it. But my, my 17 year old daughter just about lost her mind. She's super social. So she just about went out of her board being stuck at home. So I think it really depends on how social you are, don't you? It definitely depends on the person and how social you are. Like for me, for us, uh, it's it's been a blessing. I mean, I think that everything's framing, definitely. I think that yeah. it allowed like everyone's home. <laughs> so more right. people more people are open to uh, uh, being on our podcast and having this conversation. I notice like friends and people I've met are more open to being vulnerable and opening mm -hmm. up about their mental health. And like we have, we organize socials. I have actually been zooming around the world. Uh, That's awesome. And I think, I also think that what people aren't talking about is that the pandemic, since we're forced to be home and or we're forced to almost go head on with the things like their traumas and the stuff we weren't happy with in our lives and we were oh. distracting ourselves with, we're forced to go head on with it. And people are putting the blame on the pandemic when a lot of it is just because they're having to sit with those the stuff that they've been distracting themselves. That's a really from. good point. One thing I love that Byron Katie said when I was in her training, she said, you know, you could if, if you put a prisoner in solitary confinement for a month, it's the worst punishment you can give them. They'll, they'll go crazy. They actually go crazy, right? They'll lose their minds. You put a, pun, a, a prisoner in um, solitary, it's like the worst thing you can do to them. But if you do that same thing to a monk, it's the greatest gift you can give him. <laughs> different, right? Why? What's the difference? The only difference, what's in here? That's it. It's like one controls their thoughts and the other one doesn't. And so mm. it's, I, when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. That's such a fascinating thought, which means we have the ability to do it. So. Yeah. I love to piggyback of what you said. It's so it's, I think I did a 10 day meditation retreat with a uh, called Vipassana meditation, silent retreat. And that's when I really saw that, like, my thoughts don't define me. I'd kind of, like, 
I'd go back to just, uh, it's all about being internally so satisfied where you don't need anything externally. Yeah. And just, if, and like the, also the really idea that Kyle and I agree with this is that my brain always has a positive intention. So creating a positive relationship with it is really important. Like if my, if my brain is saying you're not good enough, no one likes you, most people, and I've done this in the past, have like, go away, leave me alone. When it's just like, that has a positive intention. It's trying yeah. to keep me safe. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yo, yeah. thank you. But like, it's, it's not helping how I want to show up. Exactly. Exactly. Have you noticed something similar to that, Kyle? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just and, and kind of going back to the pandemic thing. And I, I think Jeremy's right a lot about the, it's just about the framing and kind of what you want to focus on. So and I raised my hand when I said this is like this has been a positive thing for me. Yeah. And, and I mean, but I could also say that it was a negative if I focused on, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, kind of sucked about it, you know, not able to do the, the the bowling league that I was supposed to do and you know, everything shut down. But instead, you know, I choose to focus a lot. I get to chill at home with my three kids. Well, they yeah. drive me crazy sometimes, but I you know I get to see them all the time. I get to walk around the neighborhood with them, like stuff I never had time to do before. And now, you know, I just, I, I get to do those things. So that's, that's what I just try to focus on with my brain. So this has been an awesome thing for me. And plus I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit more introverted, so I, I don't need all the, I don't need to be around people all the time. So, you know, be, me being by myself in my house or just with the kids and my wife is, you know, uh, that's fine for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. I'm actually, I know I don't probably sound introverted, but I actually, like, I don't get my energy from being around people. I get my energy. I reach out to being at home. So, um, but where your attention goes, where, where, your, where your energy goes, where your attention goes, your energy flows. Well, so where you put your focus is where your energy is going to go, right? So I love what you guys are saying. Um, you know, just because you have thoughts, just because you feel a certain way, just because things are going on doesn't make them necessarily um, true or like that doesn't define you. And it's just such an important thing I think that people need to get. That people need to understand. Um, well, they don't need to, but it might be helpful. They <laughs> so could, they could. Helpful. They could. They can choose. To. I'm a farmer, so I want people to do stuff. Right. I make it happen. But, but um, no, it's really helpful to people to be able to just, you know, take that in and understand that just because you have a thought doesn't make it true. But where you draw your attention matters. Yeah. Right. I, I, so, well, no, I go ahead, please. Touch, go ahead. I just, I just touch up on like if it's default to complain and if anything changes, you know, our, my brain freaks out with change, but can change is the only consistent. So checking in and saying, all right, what's the opportunity here? What is, what can I do? You know, over and like asking yourself, what can I do now is important. I think there's this whole thing right. where I want to dwell on the past or I want to freak out and come up with all sorts of con- conjure all the possibilities of what can happen in the future. And I miss out on so much of my life. And to tie that in with what's really important is gratitude. Um, what are three good things that happened today to me? Yeah. And just practice doing that. What are three amazing things that happened to me today? It can be anything as simple as I woke up to, you know, my, my, my cereal with <laughs> nuts and uh, fruit. Like it's it, yep. it, practicing that mindset. It's more, it's more about the mindset than what the actual gratitude is. And that's important for that. I think it's fascinating. Yeah. My, um, so I, like the first two months of, um, quarantine were amazing. Like I actually enjoyed it. And then it started to get a little, I had like things starting to stack and I'm like, okay, I'm starting to feel a little stressed out. So I have a, a friend who's sort of a spiritual mentor to me. And so we made a commitment to keep each other accountable. And rather than just writing it down, because I do that a lot, I meditate, I pray, I do all these things. Instead of just doing that, it's like, we're going to be accountable to actually sending each other a text every day of what we're doing for. And there was something about that when I have to send it to someone, I don't know why, it was more powerful for me. So I absolutely 100% think people should focus on gratitude if they want to feel better fast. Um, but if you, if you feel like you need the next step, like it's maybe you need a little bump on that, try sharing it with someone, just try sharing it and see what happens. It's really powerful when you're sending it to each other and you're seeing what they're grateful for. And all of a sudden something gets in the way. I've got three kids in the house and all sorts of stuff going on. And I start to get irritated. And then her text comes in and I'm like, well, how can I be irritated now? (laughs) Like, it's really interesting, right? When someone's sending you their gratitude list to focus on something negative. It's, it was cool. 
it was just a really cool thing. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And one last account, thing. Account what do you guys Go think? About, oh no, I was just saying, what, what do you guys think about um, diaphragmatic breathing? Do you use that at all? I've done like breath diaphragmatic work. breathing. Breath work. That's it's the same breath. Okay. Work, what yeah. I'm referring to. Deep think, breathing and. The, it's fantastic. We actually had on our podcast my cousin who's a, a breathwork teacher, and it's oh, fantastic. It's getting it, from I love the fact that it, it, it throws, it makes it easier to get away from your prefrontal cortex and your thinking brain yeah. and go straight underneath to that stuff that is scary a lot of the times to get to and process and restructure stories. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and it's so interesting. So um, in martial arts, when we, because when your adrenaline gets going, you're going to get hit in the face if you're not controlling it, right? So they try to do this, you know, they try to, um, you do these exercises where you're getting used to that adrenaline rush. You want to like get inoculized, basically, basically it's inoculation. So one, the first thing you do is deep breathing. You deep breathe, even in martial arts, even right on the spot, you start these deep breathing exercises and you look side to side. So when you start to panic and you start to freeze, that's the first thing you do. Deep breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, and then look side to side and it sort of breaks that tunnel vision. Um, it, it, because what happens is when your adrenaline gets going and you get panicked, your your vision freezes and you get your hearing changes, your vision freezes, and it just gets really complicated. And so that's one of the things that we work on with that. And that's one of the things we teach our patients as well. So I love that you guys work on that and you had some on your podcast. So let me ask yeah. you, What's your goal? You told me the goal with your podcast. It's really you guys are trying to serve other people. And I love that. There's no better way to be happy than to serve other people. Um, so how can we, how can people support you and how can we support you on your podcast? I'll take it. <laughs> so how can people support us? Um, I, I guess first thing is just you know, come in and listen to our podcast. Uh, like we said before, we've had some amazing guests. Uh, we also do a little bit of just, you know, me and Jeremy talking so we can kind of share our own experiences as well. Um, further than that, obviously, like sharing the podcast, you know, leaving us review. Um, we love all that stuff. We have the, ninjas, right? Yeah, the Social Ninjas podcast. So, I mean, we even have a, a little folder. I think we both individually do this of, you know, any messages or reviews that we get from people, we like have them saved up. So anytime we're like going through like a kind of time where it's like, uh, am I do I really even have value right now? Just kind of like look through that stuff. And it's like, well, okay, I am amazing. Like all these people are loving what I'm putting out. So like really, you know, it helps us a lot. So we, we love to hear that stuff. So yeah, anything I'm missing, Jeremy? We, we actually just launched a Patreon. <laughs> you launched a what? A Patreon. What's that? Patreon is just a, a, a monthly thing and they get extra footage and bonus material. Oh, and cool. Yeah. See, this is what happens when, I love this though. You have a middle-aged mom and you got these two young guys. And so, yeah, that stuff I'm not that <laughs> <laughs> cool. But we're all trying to do the same thing, right? So that's a really good thing. You guys will reach a different audience and that's fantastic. So I love that. Um, so it's the social ninjas podcast.com if you want to leave. Kyle and Jeremy, a review, go listen to their podcast. You can find Kyle at socialanxietykyle.com, Instagram at social underscore anxiety underscore Kyle, Facebook at social anxiety Kyle, and Twitter at anxiety Kyle. You can find Jeremy, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Jeremy Talks to Strangers. I love that. Um, <laughs> <That's so amazing. laughs> If you guys are feeling depressed or, um, you know, you're like your anxiety is clinical, um, you need to talk to like a professional about it. You are welcome to call our clinics, the Amen Clinics at 844-818-0616. We don't just medicate everybody. We teach you skills like what we've been talking about. We also have supplements, things like GABA can be calming, 5-HTP, saffron, amazing, head to head with Prozac. So um, really interesting studies on some of these supplements that are really helpful. And um, we just, I'm so grateful to you guys. This is so awesome that you guys made this your mission. I'm really happy about that. Thank you, man. Thank you for letting us uh, come on. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day. And um, I'm going to check out your podcast and we're going to have you on our podcast. Sweet. Sounds awesome. All right. Sounds good. You guys have a good day. <laughs> bye bye. You as well.